Hello, this is Jan from the Fuzzy Duckling. We are going to start the second part of our project, which is making our art journal page with our flamingo drawing. Now, you learned to draw this flamingo in our Drawing Flamingos video. And we have started that, and we've got this far. We've got our flamingo drawn and colored in. And now we need to do the lettering. There are several ways you can do this. You can be brave and just come in here and write your saying with a Sharpie pen. Well, I'm not that brave because I think I'll make mistakes. Besides the fact that writing over the top of this writing doesn't show up very well. I think you found that out probably while you were working on your flamingo. So you could go and buy some stickers of the alphabet and write out your saying, which is actually the easiest way. And most stores like Walmart and your Hobby Lobbies and Michaels carry a wonderful selection of stickers. Just be sure you know what you're going to write here so you can get a good idea of what size of stickers to buy because you won't want great big stickers or it won't fit unless you just have two or three words. Or you can do what I've done, which is use a stamp set, an alphabet stamp set along with some ink and this is a fun way to do it I'm going to show you how to do this move all this over for a second I'm going to show you how to do it with one word I've actually cut out a lot of mine already so we're going to do the word leg get my ink out here and it's very easy This is just a piece of my dictionary paper that doesn't have words on it. So, here's my L. I'm going to put my L here. Oh, that came out nice and sharp. My E, now, since we're going to cut between these letters, you need to space them way out. Don't worry about whether they're in line with each other because we're going to cut these out, as I said. My G. I'm going to move it over here. And these all stamped out just beautifully. All right. Now, need my handy dandy scissors. Can't do without scissors, can we? And we're going to cut between them, leaving some space on each side of your letters. Now let's trim around the letter and get it a little closer. Now how big you want these to be is entirely up to you. And this is kind of going to look like a shabby chic method, which I like. It's not going to be perfect. You don't worry about lining everything up. You just kind of eyeball everything. You don't have to measure around your letters or anything. Or even worry about cutting out perfectly straight. One more letter here for our word. There we go. Now we have one more step here is take my, I'm going to take my black Sharpie marker. You can use any kind of marker you have. And you don't have to do this in black. A pink might look kind of neat. And we're going to just color the edges. And this really sets it off. I'll show you again here. Let me show you what we're doing. You see how the black edging sets off all the letters? And that's what we're doing. Now this may take you a little while, but you know, we're not doing art to be in a hurry. If we enjoy art, we should just enjoy the journey <laughs> and take our time to make our things as, as good as possible. 
And we always do a little better if we're not in a hurry. At least I do. There we go. There are my letters for the word leg. Now there's one other way you could do this. You could have your little piece of paper, have your Sharpie, and just draw your own letters. Now, it depends on how good of a printer you are, if you're going to like that method. But, it's kind of neat to have your own writing on your crafts, rather than somebody else's. And, hey, there's another advantage. It's very inexpensive to make your own, rather than going out and buying stamps and ink and all that stuff and really your own don't look half bad even if you're not the best printer in the world come along edge it just like you did the others now a lot of you if you're already into crafts will have stamp sets and stickers and all those things around and you'll have options but if you haven't and you don't want to go to the store hey do it this way there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. Give that an extra go since I was a little crooked. But you see what I mean there. Very crooked. That doesn't look half bad either. So you could do your own lettering if you wish. That is something that you will need to decide for yourself. All right, now I'm going to show you a couple tricks for getting these on your page. Now I found when I got all my letters made and I put them here that it really got hard to move them around. For some reason they just suddenly get a life of their own and it's hard to move them. They move when you don't want them to and won't move when you want them to. And here is an easy trick. Your handy dandy yellow pencil with an eraser on the end. Look how easy I can move things around with that eraser. It just is, it almost works like magic. And then really, it's the only way to go when you try to get these words all laid out. Now, I'm going to get these laid out in my saying, and I say I'll probably fast forward through this part for you. Okay, I have one letter missing here that I will make in just a second. I want to show you how to glue these. Now, I suggest you don't use a wet glue like Elmer's or uh, any of these wet glues because it will wrinkle your paper. Just use your handy dandy school glue stick. These work great for this. Once you get these right where you want them or close because you're going to have to pick them up to put glue on them. But pretty much where you want your saying to go and listen you feel free to use this saying that the fuzzy duckling has but make up your own put your own saying in here if you wish now if you're making this for yourself and to put in your own book you can say anything you want put anything you want go on the internet and find sayings but if you think you might sell it then you have to be careful of copyright laws and plagiarism, which is using somebody else's words. So it really is best just to make up your own sayings. And then you don't have to worry about using somebody else's work or having them get mad at you. But feel free to use the fuzzy ducklings here. Our saying, we made it up and I'm giving you permission to use it however you want. So just pick up your letter rub some glue on back I think everyone knows how to use a glue stick and put it down and it's as easy as that we'll do another one here so once we get our letters down we're almost done at that point we're going to add a little bit of background color 
fix the edges and if you want we're going to put some flamingo tracks. The next thing we want to do is make our frayed edges here. Now that is optional. You may prefer to just leave your edges straight but I really like the look of those frayed edges and there's an easy way to do it. Get your paintbrush, a tiny, well not tiny, but a little paintbrush and a few drops of water. Now I want to tear along this edge first so I'm going to take my water and just get it wet along the line I want to tear on. This will soften your paper and make it easier to tear it without tearing further into your picture than you want to go. Otherwise sometimes it has a life of its own and you'll end up tearing like up into your flamingo's leg or something and you don't want to do that. So it's all wet on this one. Hold on the dry side so that if it does go a little crazy and go too far you can stop it with your thumb and just tear where this is wet and the wetness helps control where you tear now but this is a little jaggeder than I want so I'm going to take some of those lens off you just work with that until it's the way you want it okay and you need to do all four sides that way now in areas like this we're going to have to be careful because our lettering came out really close but I don't want any straight lines on this side so we're just going to be super careful It's still going to try to have a life of its own today, I think. There we go. It's easier to tear downwards than it is to tear up. Okay, we have two sides done. I need to straighten this, unstraighten this just a little bit. It won't hurt if my tea goes over the edge. All right, I'm going to finish this, but I'll fast forward over this part so you don't have to watch me slowly tearing paper. That's about as bad as watching glue dry, isn't it? Or as they say, watching paint dry. That might be a little more interesting to watch paint dry than it is to watch glue dry. And we do a lot of that if we're crafters, waiting for things to dry. go I have my edges all torn now before we can color those edges because if you notice in this one we have darkened the edges a little bit you'll want to be sure your paper is all dry because it will change the way your media that you're going to use to color the edges acts there's two things you can use for this if you're a scrapbooker or a crafter, you may have some inks and stamps laying around. I love this stuff. I use it so much to darken edges of things, especially in scrapbooking. And if you have this, I'll show you on a scrap piece because this is still a little wet. Just dab your dabber on. You know, it's always a good thing to have a uh, scrap piece of paper under this when you do it. You can see how dark and marked up my work board has become but be careful and don't stain up your tables and stuff see you just rub along and that's how easy it is to get your edges darkened this stuff I love it but there's another thing you can do you can use chalk and we're actually going to use chalk in our next step so I do hope you have some <laughs> 
if you've been into scrapbooking and other crafts, again, you probably have some chalk. This set, I just love this particular set. I'll get this back. This is a set I really like, and I've had it for years. These sets last a long time, but I am about out of some of it, and I do have a new set I could use when I run out. Now, makeup. I won't call them sponges. They're, they're like cotton. These are wonderful for dabbing chalks onto things. So if you can find a dark brown chalk, we'll turn this over. Just dab into that brown chalk and smooth smudge it on to the edges of your picture. And this is the method we're going to use here as soon as my paper is dry. See how nicely that made the edge of my paper dark. Now, if you don't have any of this chalk and you don't want to go to Hobby Lobby or someplace and buy it, you have an alternative. Sidewalk chalk. Look at that. You can take your sidewalk chalk, get you a knife. I'll just use my scissors here. Scrape off. Let's use blue. It'll show up better. Scrape off until you get some dust, some chalk dust in a pile. I'm not sure if that's enough. And the same way you did with the other chalk. Just smush it up onto your little piece of cotton. And rub it on the edge of your piece of paper. Now, sidewalk chalk isn't quite as in intensely colored, so you might have to put several layers on to get it as dark as you want. But it will do the job. It may take a little more patience. Can you see how that colored that blue? So, if you don't have any of those, <laughs> try a little bit of colored pencil lightly circled in, and that may give you... a the results you want. But the easiest thing is just to have some good old chalk on hand. And we'll use lots of chalk in our future projects. So if you can find some of these to pick up, I'd say go for it. So I think we're dry enough for me to get that on there after I put it all up. I'm going to take my little piece of cotton here and I'm going to rub around the edges. Now, if I didn't get completely dry, it's not a tragedy. It will just make that spot, it will make it a spot. It will go on a little darker where it's wet. But it's still, that will kind of add to the vintage look. Now, again, this part is totally optional. You might not like the looks of darker edges and that is totally up to you. You know, all of this art is just something for you to make, and you can make it any way you want to. And take these ideas and make other art with it. It doesn't have to be just this art. Remember how to do your edgings, and you can use that on another picture sometime. Or how to make your lettering. Use that on another picture sometime. Use these ideas that you get off the fuzzy duckling as tools. Tools that can use on art later. And build up your toolbox full of these tools. And pretty soon you're going to be coming up with all kinds of ideas of art you can make on your own. And you won't even need to go to the fuzzy duckling to get some ideas. You'll be giving us ideas. While we're here, let's go ahead and add the background colors because I'm going to do that with chalk on mine. And you see how he has a little bit of yellow around his edges and a tiny bit of blue for water at the bottom. 
we're going to do that with the same chalks, the same method. So I'm going to get me a little clean piece of cotton here. I'm going to go into my bright yellow and just carefully brush some yellow chalk around my flamingo. Don't worry too much about it staining your flamingo. If you have marker or colored pencil down, it tends to to uh, block the uh, chalk from sticking, which is a good thing. You don't want to rub real hard over here or you might get a yellow tinge, but you don't have to worry too much about getting yellow on the edges of your bird. It just doesn't stick too much, which is wonderful. Now, if you had a place there you didn't get covered, then it might. Now for a little blue to show that he's standing in a little puddle of water. Get another little piece of my cotton. You can tell this is my favorite blue and it's about gone. Tend to get your favorite colors and those run out and you keep a lot of the colors that you don't use very often. Isn't that funny? That's true in all of our media. Your favorite markers will run out way before a lot of the others do. All right, now we have it all chalked in. It's almost done, so let's do the very last step, and you'll be all finished. Get your black piece of paper. See how well that fits? It fits wonderful. Get that handy dandy glue stick out. Again, I wouldn't recommend wet glue because it will probably wrinkle your paper. Unless there is another thing you can do. You could put this onto a hard canvas so that you can frame it and hang it on the wall. And then you might possibly want to use some Mod Podge. And in that case, that would be wet. But it's something you have to be very careful with. And we'll probably do some Mod Podging in some of our other projects down the road. But this guy, he's going in our art journal. So he should be fine with just glue around the edges. All right. Here we go. Carefully center it up. So it looks like it's pretty well centered and even on our paper. Push it out to the edges so that the edges get smoothed down. If you have any edges sticking up, now's the time to fix them real quick, which I have down here. And we're done! Look at that. Here's your first art journal page for the Flamingo Projects. And then, if you want to do like I want to do, I'm going to put this little guy in these page protectors. You can buy these at a lot of stores, Office Supply, Walmart. I actually have the best place i found to buy these is at Sam's because you can get a great big box with 250 of them in there. And so those last you a while. Oh, I did mention, if you want to hang this on the wall, you can do it on a hard canvas board. Paint that canvas board black, and then Mod Podge your picture on. And this is just a piece of heavy twine with barrel beads on it. Glued on, I had the tape there to hold it down while it dried. Glued on the back. And now you also have one to hang on your wall. Isn't that cute? I hope you've enjoyed this project. I really do. I've enjoyed making it. And if you do, I would love for you to post your picture on our Facebook page and show us all what you've done, especially if you've made any changes. But you know what? I forgot to show you how to make flamingo feet. It's very easy. It's very hurriedly do this. It's easy to draw a flamingo foot. There's some we've drawn. 
dry you, kind of a flying you. I put a little dot up there for his big toe and just come up like that. And there is a flamingo track. Then take your marker, color him in, cut it out, and glue it to your picture. Obviously, you'll need to make them smaller than what I did. Make four or five of those and just glue them to your picture. There you go. Now, I really am done this time. I've enjoyed making this video and taking some time with you, and we'll see you on our next project. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.